Hello, this is the third tutorial. I'd like to talk quickly about the renderings and how to set up basic material <coughs> in uh, 3ds Max using V-Ray uh, to do some really simple rendering. Before I start, I just want to let you know uh, there's other rendering engines available in Max. Uh, I'm not going to repeat because uh, this is already covered in another tutorial. For example, you have Art ART render from Autodesk, uh, you have Arnold render, you have uh, Viri render. I covered something related to HDRI, Skylight. Uh, so, welcome to check out this old tutorial. Um, in this new one, I will just focus on the basic uh, concept of what are the shaders or the way different uh, maps you can apply into a shader and how you can set up basic Viri rendering. Okay, um, so let's start. Um, in this file, I already collapsed <coughs> all the geometries uh, with the history. I think I can start with this one. But for some reason, if you want to um, continue to manipulate the geometry, you probably want to go back to the earlier version. Uh, in this version, the earlier version 1, uh, you can see I still have all the history related uh, saved right here. Uh, the benefit is in the future if you you know going back to the original mesh and you did some new change uh, for instance I can pick up the face <coughs> holding shift right? then I will go ahead do the extrude uh, so if you did some uh, new uh, functions new actions uh, to this geometry right? if you make this really high um, I can use W to move uh, either way and maybe extrude this really high right? so if you change this um, then I can use scale to scale down maybe I want to do something like a tower I don't know um, as soon as you changed uh, this uh, maybe I will use E to rotate Okay. I have this new shape. As soon as you create this new shape, <coughs> then if you turn on this, uh, all the actions, right, you can see this model will be updated, and you have this new uh, shape, right, with the new uh, you know details with lattice, with uh, quads all applied automatically. Uh, so I assume you probably want to keep all the histories in order to continue edit uh, the original form okay so let's assume this is the form I like um, I will probably save this one as a new name so we can always have a copy uh, I will save this as 03 and then I'm going to apply some basic material and maybe a shading as well so let's go ahead open the V-Ray. This is actually the toolbar related to the V-Ray. Um, I just docked to the side. Uh, if you don't have it, you can right click and then you can see the V-Ray toolbar and you can turn it on. And then I'm going to set up some basic lighting. There's a lot of uh, lights available in V-Ray. I'm not going to go through since this is not really a render focus uh, project. I will just do a simple V-Ray Storm light, uh, click yes. All right. Uh, so once you have this, um, can I put it in? Oh, I have to drag it in. Okay, and click. All right. Here we go. It doesn't really matter where you put this storm light. Uh, it's gonna actually cover the entire scenario, right? Even if it looks pretty small. That's okay. Then I'm going to do a render. Uh, so in the V ray, let me just make this bar floating. It's easier to <coughs> oops to have this one uh, floating in on the top. So you can easily see maybe I don't know, maybe dock horizontally right here. Alright. Then I'm going to do a quick render. Uh, so here is the render button. We want to render. You have uh, different options. I was just using the. This is called uh, buffer, uh, frame buffer. 
uh, is definitely pretty bright right now. Uh, so I need to make some adjustment uh, to make it appropriate. So the first render uh, looks super bright. You might wonder, hey, what's going on? Um, actually, the geometry is here if you look at alpha, right, is there. The reason it looks so bright is, number one, the, the material is white. Uh, number two, you don't have a ground, so the light does not really bouncing. Number three is, you know, the skylight. Uh, you can probably make some adjustment for the intensity of this light. So I will cover this one by one. Uh, before we start, I just want to show you here in the render setup, uh, you do have all the renders available. Uh, you know, if you're using the Vray 5, assuming this is the current version, uh, instead of using the um, production render mode, which will take a longer time because anti-aliasing, all the you know calculations, you can do the iterative render mode. Uh, this will make the render a lot of faster. Uh, but you probably don't have the same quality of the final render, okay? So just keep in mind that this is some settings. And then let's do something really quick. Uh, so first thing uh, first is I like to create something on the ground. So this will be sort of like uh, like my terrain. Uh, so here I will just simply create uh, maybe, uh, let's close this, maybe a quick... Um, Let's do a box. Or oh, I can do a surface plan either way. Uh, the goal is you want to have something on the ground, right? So that will cover. Uh, I can use R to scale, W to move, right? So you have something there. For this light, um, I think it actually doesn't matter the skill I remember, but I will scale up a little bit and then do a render. So here, just make sure I'm using the interactive render mode. Right. You see the ground, you see the white color geometry. Things start to show up, right? That's pretty good. So then we can continue to uh, work on the details. So first thing first is uh, I probably want to change the material. So everything will have some color. It's not like pure white, right? So I'm going to do it. Um, so first, let me see my weary light. Uh, this is the default dorm light, I believe. Is there anything I need to change? Um, let's see, <clears throat> color, multiplier. Well, this is values you probably later can play with. Uh, this will have a direct impact on the color, the temperature of the light, the intensity of the light. Um, we really don't light. Uh, you can have also try the, uh, the spherical light as well as the sunlight. They all have some impact. But anyway, um, I will leave that to you. Uh, I have another tutorial I just showed you later. You can watch uh, this tutorial. It covered all the details on the lighting, <coughs> on the material. Okay, so I will go back to this and I will continue to talk about the basic material. Um, so let's do another quick render here. All right, so have this, right? As you can see, if I, you know, change my view or toggle my view, this is interactive real-time render. It's a little bit more expensive uh, than other renders, so that means you need to have a good GPU uh, in order to handle this type of interactive render. So I will go ahead and create the material, right? So here in, uh, oh, before I do the material, I really want to talk quickly about, uh, in Vray, there is a material library here. If you click, uh, it gives you a lot of really nice material. Um, however, this material I elaborate probably not really installed in the right way in CGC computer. Um, that's the reason, you know, when you click this Vray asset browser, you probably nothing pop up. Um, the reason is I will show you really quick what happened is uh, when you install Vray, you can have the option to download material library. 
in this case, I think in the CGC computer, they don't really download the library in the first place. So what I did is I manually download the library. Uh, so I basically go to the um, chaos group, and this is the V-Ray company. And I go to the 2020, I go to the Bing, I go to the uh, material library, I double click the file, and then here it allows you to manually download the library. The library is about 9G, 9 gigabits, it's pretty big. Uh, what I did is I saved the file in my local drive into a public very folder. So this is the place everybody can see. Uh, so it's pretty easy. This library, once I download in this computer, whoever log in, they can always see this folder. So this is non-G, it takes for a while to download. And also if you recall, <clears throat> in my uh, in my project setting, uh, which is right here. Right, so here's my project. In my project, I did set up this uh, dictionary uh, pass directly into my C drive public query. So what happened is this became a environment variable. Uh, so when you click that link, uh, Max is able to recognize, hey, you want to load the asset directly from here. So, but anyway, I would encourage you if you have your personal computer, if you install a very in your own computer, you can definitely download this 9G library. For CGC, things are pretty complicated because we have multiple users. They don't want to put a new file in a personal user profile. Another person log in, you won't be able to see it. So that's the issue. But anyway, uh, this is the material library. Um, I will try now to use the material here so we can create something from scratch. Uh, but this is a really nice place. Uh, if you double click, you can definitely see this is the V-Ray material, and you can always, you know, right click, you can add this to your thing, uh, so later you can use it. So it's exactly the same as uh, Rhino, as SketchUp, as uh, Maya, so V-Ray can be applied in many different software. Okay, so just like you know material library. I will not using it, I will close it, just pretend we don't have that. And then I will start from scratch, right? How to create your own material. So right now I have a white plastic. Uh, I'm going to create a new one. So in material editor, you have actually two options. I would prefer go to the first one if you are the beginner. The second one is more complicated. Uh, there are the different version of editor. So the first editor is really I would call the old school editor, which was available uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So it's not really changed too much. I will go ahead and uh, create a new material first. Uh, so here, get material. And then you have this whole long list of materials. Uh, by default, the standard scanline is your default material. Uh, if you want to transfer to other programs, this is the safe way you can create a standard material. I will, I will show you this one first. So double click you have this standard material now, right? And then you can create uh, a color, maybe, you know, some high saturation color. Oops, I forgot to click OK. That's always the case, right? So you have this purple color. Um, since I have the ground as purple, probably I want to choose something different. I want to create, I don't know, green color maybe, really bright green, okay? So I have this green color. Uh, then I'm going to apply to this uh, object. Right? So here is how you make a selection. You can use Q, which is a hard key for selection. So pick up these objects, then you can click Assign. Right? As long as you assign the green, you see the green show up in the real-time uh, frame buffer rendering in, uh, in V-Ray. So if I zoom in, uh, this looks pretty nice. Right? I can see some nice details. Uh, that's how you got this uh, standard uh, material. And then you can play with you know different settings. You can you know increase the glossiness. You can increase the specular. Uh, then you can start to see this uh, you know uh, this geometry start to have some kind of plastic look. So this is basically the way you manipulate a standard 
material. Really straightforward. And also in the future, if you want to apply, let's say, a material, you can go to Maps. And here you can uh, go to Diffuse Color. And I will click Map. I will click Bitmap. Uh, then you can pick a pattern. Um, I don't know. I don't really have much. Um, thing looks like uh, plastic. Maybe I would just, for the sake of demo, I would just choose something like a brick. And that doesn't really make sense, but I just want to show you. So if you have a brick for this, then you see the brick pattern will show up. It's kind of weird, um, but that's how it works. Uh, you can also click this show material. So you can see in the real time background, if you disable that, it just looks like green. Click, uh, it will show the the breaks in the background, right? So that's how you get the breaks, um, but probably doesn't really make sense to have a break, right, for this wireframe. Um, plus, I think the UV mapping looks pretty odd, right? So if you want to change that, you can, you have to do uh, UV mapping, uh, which is a way you can wrap around um, a two D image. To a 3D objects, so you can type UVW or you can type UV. So here is the UVW map, and then I can start to do different options. I can probably do a box render, uh, so you can see, hey, this is break kind of show up, uh, and then you have this guy called Gizmo. Uh, Gizmo allow you to control the scale or the repetition of the geometry. Uh, so once you have the gizmo, you can control the values, length, width, and height right here. Or you can just using the scale tool, uh, which is I think is uh, E, E R. R is a scale. So if you scale the break down, right, you can see this will update automatically. So you are not really scale the geometry. You are still the pattern of the break wrap around the geometry. Right? So this is called a gizmo. Uh, if you're not comfortable with scale here directly, you can just type the values here. So this defines the scale of the x, y, z, uh, you know, coordinations. So here maybe I want to do I don't know maybe two, and here I can do two, and here. Oops, and here I can do two, right? So you can have like a two meter by two meter by two meter box, which defines the scale of the break. You can sort of see the break right here. But anyway, it doesn't really make sense to have break here. Um, so I can probably swap the beat map to something else, uh, maybe like a like a stucco or something more like a plastic. I don't really have any good one for this type of geometries. But anyway, just choose a random one. <clears throat> Here we go, right? So that looks like a fabric. Well, it's actually, let's go back to the hierarchy. Uh, by this button, uh, you can see here's a map. If you don't need a map, you can drag no map, drop. Uh, so it's get rid of the texture. So it's going back to the green. In fact, I think the green looks, looks okay. Let's just keep them as green. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it about how to apply the basic materials uh, in uh, in uh, Max. The next one, I will create a new material. Uh, by the way, you see this material show up as this white triangles in the corner. So that means this material has been used in my scene. Right? It's a scene material. In fact, if you get a new material, uh, you should be able to see there is a list of current object uh, current materials available in the thing. So you have this material 01, which is the green one. Okay. Um, sometimes I think this makes more sense if you give a name frame green rather than just a default name. Alright, so for this new material, let's go ahead and create a new material. This time instead of doing a standard, right, which is the one we did last time, I'm going to create a very material. Okay. So there is a lot of material material here. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of them because that's not really the focus of this exercise. I would just do a really simple one, very material. 
double click so it show up and you can see the map the setting is just a little bit different from the standard shader uh, so for example if I go to diffuse I can choose maybe a blue color right and then I will maybe click the ground let's, let's make, make sure I've got all of this gizmo mode of my playground then I will click the surface and then apply right. so this blue now is applied as a ground right. simple like that this looks pretty nice and then I can play with a little bit for example there is a reflection by default is black so that means no reflection but if I click the black color give this to something gray then you can see the reflection show up right. so the white color means is more reflective right so you have this really nice oops I forgot to click OK always forgot that so click OK so you have this nice reflective material right on the as a playground looks like water right <clears throat> but you know if you want to have something looks like water you can go ahead apply the bitmap I think I have something that looks like water. Um, yeah, this is just a default material library I give you if you download my version from GitHub. Um, nothing fancy, it's all old school stuff, very low resolution. That's the reason that's not really a copyright issue uh, of these materials. I don't really something have a, do I have like a water? I have sky. Okay, so I have something that looks like water. Right, so you have the water material show up, uh, but again, I think the scale, right, not right, uh, because this one I really haven't really played the uh, UV mapping. So you can apply the same kind of strategy. Here you can select objects, and here you can do the UVW. Um, and then you can control this probably as a planner. Uh, in the planner, you can define the scale, right? So here, instead of doing the gizmo, I can just click the gizmo and the scale the gizmo. Right? You can see this with this yellow color thing show up. So if you drag down, you are scaled down this gizmo to a smaller version. Uh, then you have something looks like a water. Okay, also you got reflections. Cool. So you see that's that's basically the whole process how uh, you can manipulate the scale of your texture in uh, 3ds Max. Right? It's a little bit different from from Rhino, uh, but it's is more robust in my opinion. Got reflections, you got the patterns. Um, I think that's pretty much about the Rhino, uh, not Rhino, V-Ray rendering in uh, in Max. Um, in the future, I will talk about how to transfer this into program like Twinmotion, um, where you can have more control on the lighting, on the material. Uh, so in this homework, this is just like a basic rendering. I'm not expecting something super complicated, super fancy. Uh, so if you just do the basic render with V-Ray, that should be nice. All right, probably you know not using this saturated, super saturated color, but play with some of the textures. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's it about how to create uh, the material uh, in uh, 3ds Max. And if you do have access to the library, uh, feel free. You can, you know, play with all the available shaders in the library. Um, if you want to use it, it's actually pretty simple. You can just, I'm sure, super quick, in, just in case you have this. Um, so, for example, I want to use this one to my, you know, uh, playground. I will right click, add to scene, right? So basically, you add this to my current scene. I think it's a good idea you activate another uh, empty uh, shader first and then you right click add to thing. So basically this guy will be pushed into my current thing. Right? It will show up in this empty 
current active uh, shader. Uh, but it, you don't really see this white corner yet because this one is not really applied to the objects yet. Right. So if I want to use it, I will probably let's maybe using this one. I think we have some white color pieces here. So click that, then I will go ahead and apply. Right. So basically apply that grain into this noodle-like stuff. Um, if you want to dig into there's a tons of control here. Um, it, I mean, really depends on the style, right? Of this V-Ray. This is called V-Ray Fast SSS. So it has a little bit different interface uh, in terms of the control reflections. Uh, but there's a lot of available uh, material here. You can do the emissive, you can do glass, uh, you can do tiles. Okay. So, yeah, feel free to, to download this non G library uh, if you want to really play with it. Uh, so for example, this one I can add to the thing. So it will show up right here. Then I will go ahead, you know, uh, this is still my current selection, so apply. So that will show up. Uh, but again, the UVW mapping is not really there yet. Uh, so you see the pattern is kind of random. But you got a point. Uh, maybe I will apply to the ground. Let's take a quick look. I think that's probably more appropriate. Uh, yeah, here we go. You see the ground show up <clears throat> with these really nice wood panels. Right, you see the panel show up right there. Okay, I think that's it. Um, about the basic uh, material. Uh, I do want to show you really quick another um, technique. Um, let's assume you know you don't have the very material library. Uh, you only have you know the basic version of V-Ray. Uh, you can still do this kind of thing by creating your own library. Uh, so here you know Quixel Mega Scan. This is actually a free library. I highly recommend uh, to use it. Um, there's a lot of really good um, materials available here. If I go to surface, I see all the shaders. If I go to, for example, um, historic, then you see the you know the shader is available. It's really nice. Uh, this is all free, by the way. You can go to grass. You can go to fabric. Right? It's all there. So, for example, I like to use some of these materials in my very rendering. Uh, so I will show you really quick how you can bring those material into uh, into V-Ray. So here uh, you can sign in to download. Um, since I already have a login name, I will just simply log in my Epic game. By the way, this is something I highly recommend. Uh, the next project, we're going to use Twin Motion. Oops. So, the Twin Motion uh, is a part of. Oops, I don't remember my password. Oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, Twin Motion is a part of Unreal. Um, so also the you know the mega scan from Quixel is a part of Unreal as well. Uh, so if you do have Unreal, uh, sorry, the Epic login, you can get free access to this huge library. I'm going to do the 2K. I'm not super crazy about high resolution. I will download uh, this shader. So this is like leather. Uh, so save the file. You're done. Right? Simple like that. Uh, once you select the you know the material you want to download, then uh, I'm going to unzip this file and then I will bring that into V-Ray. Okay, I will show you how to do that. Uh, once you have download finished, so this is the one I can extract files. Right. So you should have this new um, geometry and uh, not geometry. The shaders show up. Uh, so typically, this could be another lecture in the future. 
uh, you have the look of the geometry. Um, usually this is called our battle. Uh, but also you have the displacement, you have the normal, you have the roughness, you have the displacement. Uh, I think this is a lot of different layers. Uh, for the R battle, if I double click, you see this black color. Well, let me see if I can download another one. I don't really like this one. It's hard to, to see the actual textures. Maybe let's do this one. Yeah, this is better. Just for the sake of demo, we can see the color. Patterned fabric. Okay, so 2K means 2000, right? Um, okay, once we download the fabric, oh, by the way, besides the 2D, you have 3D objects you can download too. Right? It's really awesome. You can have, you know, modular building. Uh, this is a 3D scanned geometry, so super detailed. Uh, feel free to, to play with it. All right, so here I'm going to my download folder, and I'm going to right-click, extract files. So I have the fabric now. Oops, this is the wrong one. Fabric, right? Yeah, this is a lot of easier to see. So the arbado is actually the color, right? Also, you have the normal mapping. Um, this is the concept. Uh, I think in the future when we do more real-time rendering, normal is a way you can control the reflection, how the material will bouncing uh, through the light. Uh, we probably gonna bring this into two motion and then create this material there in two motion. Um, you can also do this through other program like instance painter. Um, there's a lot of options there, right? But right now, what we really care is only this one, uh, the look, right? The fabric. So I will probably just simply copy this fabric. And then I will go to my, um, let me see besides fabric, I will probably copy the roughness as well. I think this tool will be useful. Copy that. And I will bring that in my uh, folder, right? So if you recall, I have everything saved in Oh, sorry, I'm actually downloading in my local computer. Yeah, I have, how to say, I have one computer is in uh, CGC. This is my local computer. Um, that's okay, though. I think I can still be able to um, copy-paste across computers. I will copy them, right? Then I will minimize this. I will go to my CGC computer and I will go to my project folder. I think I'm right now in my project. If I save as, you can see here's my current project CTM project E2 things. Right? So just make sure you are in the right location. TM project E2. Um, this is the max file, right? But I want to copy and paste the material into maybe the pattern folder. I think this is a part of the pattern. Or if you don't want to, you know, lost the file, you can put this into a new folder. Let's call this is my fabric. Okay. And then I will paste. Right here. Uh, so basically, I'm copy from the local computer, uploading to CGC computer. You have too many computers open. Here we go. So once you have this here, then we are able to customize, right? So we can either use the you know the green one, um, or we can use you know this guy. I think we'll just create a new one from scratch on that. So here is a standard. I will just use standard diffuse. Right, bit map. Then I'm going to point to uh, the, my fabric right here. So now you have this new material. Then I will apply to my selection, which is the ground. Now you see this fabric will show up on the ground. Pretty cool. Right. So this is for the interior design. I think this is super useful. Um, you can have all kinds of material apply. Uh, usually, I don't really control much 
you know, in a, just want to show you. So here you have this um, Albedo applied as uh, the diffuse map, but you also have other maps. Uh, for example, you can apply another into the roughness. There's not really roughness um, shader here, uh, channel here, but you can apply this to the specular uh, or glossiness. Uh, this have some kind of relationship to the roughness. So here is really subtle. So you have that. Here we go, right? So you have two maps applied to different channels. You can also click this button to display so you can see that in real time. The new fabric, right? So uh, a part of this homework, I would like you to, you know, go ahead, download something from Megascan, then you can customize this your own shader and apply to the ground and see how that looks like in 3D. All right, I think that's that's pretty much about the uh, the whole parametric, uh, you know, uh, stuff related to rendering. Uh, what I mean parametric is everything still linked together. Uh, so here, if you you know go back to lattice, if you change the radius from two to four, double that, right? You can see everything will become pretty fat. Right? <laughs> And uh, it still carries the same logic. So this somehow is parametric in this case. Um, yeah, you have this really nice playground. Okay, um, I think that's it for, for this um, demonstration. Uh, definitely feel free to play with it. Uh, if you, you know, create your Rhino model and uh, you probably want to, you know, create some relationship between these two. Uh, so maybe, you know, this this became the, let me close the render real time, because this kind of slow down. So maybe you want to create some relationship between these two shapes. Uh, maybe this um, gray color one, uh, I think space part to lock it, uh, could be the, you know, uh, the roof panels. Or maybe could be the structural support for this. Uh, now, if I look at from the this view, uh, it kind of looks like a playground now. And then I can make this one a little bit lower. Right, so we have that shape. Okay. Then I can do a final rendering. <clears throat> that looks pretty nice. Um, so if you're ready, you know, to do the final one, I would recommend bouncing up the resolution. Uh, so now you can afford to do a higher resolution, maybe even double this, 1600 by 1200. You can type the value here. Uh, you can switch render to production mode. Uh, of course, this will take a longer time. Uh, then you can get the final smoothed version of our very uh, render. All right, I think that's it for um, for this tutorial. Um, let me see anything else I forgot to mention. Uh, we covered mega scan. We covered um, basic mapping texture. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Hopefully, this will help you uh, to do the render in in Max. Uh, for some reason, if you don't have V-Ray, again, you can run, use other rendering engines in Max, uh, which is covered in this tutorial, so you can follow them. Arnold material, uh, the render engine is really nice as well. Uh, it's not bad at all. Uh, the default render called ART, ART render is really nice. It also, they have all HDRI support, uh, very nice features. All right, I think that's it.